this is TCB ASMR here. In this video, I will be doing a 2023 NBA mock draft, but only for the lottery picks. So only the first 14 picks, just because, I mean, that's what people are going to pay attention to the most. Obviously, there'll be, or there will be prospects who become all-stars or pretty solid players that will be outside of the top 14. I can almost guarantee it. But, of course, the top 14 is the most exciting part. So, of course, the San Antonio Spurs won the lottery. Uh, I think, without a doubt, they will pick Victor Wembanyama. I don't think they will pick uh, Scoot Henderson for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they would. So, yeah, I'm going to pick Wemby to the San Antonio Spurs with the second overall pick. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets could trade back, honestly. Brandon Miller is an option here. Here's their current roster. They have Lamelo, of course, at point. Uh, Terry Rozier at the two. Kelly Oubre at the three. Gordon Hayward at the four. And P.J. Washington at the five. So a little bit of a small ball lineup. Um, they picked, uh, who did they pick last year? Uh, yeah, Mark Williams. They picked Mark Williams in the first round in the or right outside the lottery last year with their 15th overall pick currently their backup center so i can't really see them going center of course which uh, the next center is Derek lively um they could go power forward if they don't want to go with gordon hayward in the future uh, which is why i could see them picking brandon miller but Actually, no, I think, I think they will either pick Brandon Miller or I think they could trade this pick down. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to have them go with Brandon Miller uh, because I'm not sure Gordon Hayward's, um, what his contract looks like, but I know he's been injured a lot. And Brandon Miller's a great shot creator, great shooter as well, which is definitely something that would be great on a team with one of the best passers in the entire NBA. Um, and I don't think they would pick Scoot just because LaMelo is the main ball handler. So why take the ball away from LaMelo? Um, I don't really see Scoot playing at the two, although I think he could, especially if they're playing Terry Rozier at the two. I think Scoot is what, like two, or not two, 6'2", uh, two, like 215, so he's, he's built. But um, I don't see them wanting to take the ball away from LaMelo like that. I think they want the ball to be in LaMelo's hands pretty much at all times whenever it can be and letting him run the offense. So we're going to take Brandon Miller, but I think they could trade down. I could definitely see that. Next we have the Rockets, or not the Rockets, the Trailblazers, who have Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, Jeremiah Grant, uh, Drew Eubanks, and Yurk or not Yurkich. Um, Nurkic so for the Trailblazers um, I also don't see them picking Scoot unless they trade Damian Lillard if they trade Damian Lillard then sure I can I can do Scoot um, but honestly I think they go the first Thompson brother Amen Thompson um, I forget it what is he like 6'5 alright no he's 6'7 okay so he's a little bit bigger 6'7 um, they currently have Drew Eubanks playing the four, which I, I'm not going to lie, I don't really like that. Uh, they have Nasir Little as the backup, who's not bad. Uh, they do have a lot of small forwards, so maybe they don't go uh, small forward. I mean, ideally, I think for them, they would like to go either, either center or power forward. Um, of course, if they keep Dane, you don't need to go point. And Anthony Simons is a pretty great shooter, but the problem with Simons and Lillard is the exact problem they had with C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard. There is no defense in that backcourt. And I mean, Jeremiah Grant is a pretty decent defender. I'm not too sure about Drew Eubanks. Uh, and Nurkic is an okay defender. So, you know, you do have some defensive problems. Of course, you have Matisse Thybul who can slide in at the two. So if they decide they want to play Matisse Thybul at the two, they could do that. They also have Shady on Sharp, who they drafted last year with the number seven overall pick, which is why I don't think they'll go Scoot, because they just picked Sharp. 
who has actually shown some pretty good promise. Back to the backcourt for the Trailblazers. I think they have to trade Anthony Simons. If they want to go with Dame, they have to trade Anthony Simons, or they have to trade Dame and go with Shady on Sharp or Anthony Simons at the point guard. Because you can't have a backcourt of two players that can't defend in today's NBA. It's just, it's just it just doesn't work. Um, I mean, you look you look at the teams that are in the finals right now. You look at the Celtics. What do they have at point guard and shooting guard? Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown, two players. I mean, Marcus Smart is a great defender, and Jalen Brown is a uh, is a plus defender. He's a pretty good defender. Then you look on the other side, the Nuggets. Now, Jamal Murray isn't a great defender, but he's not definitely not a bad one. And then Bruce Brown, who doesn't always start, but plays a two. Um, and KCP, who I believe, yeah, he, KCP starts. KCP is a pretty solid defender, uh, a hustler, so he, he gets stuck in. Uh, so he's definitely not a liability on defense. These two are both a liability on defense. Uh, so, but for now, I think... I don't think they would go Derek Lively this high at number three. Honestly, I think they could trade this pick away, but for the sake of the video and uh, for the sake of them not trading anything away, uh, I guess they would go Derek Lively. I don't know. Um, I, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about Derek Lively just because Duke um, didn't do amazing in the tournament, which is where I watch most of my college basketball. Um, I mean, he made the ACC All-Tournament team, or All-Tournament second team, which isn't amazing. Um, let's see. Doesn't say too much about his game, just kind of stats, which he didn't have the best stats. He only averaged five points. He did average two blocks, which is, which is pretty damn good. Um, not really a three-point shooter. I mean, he, he shot... When he did shoot the ball, he shot at a high percentage, but I mean, he's a center. Kind of supposed to do that. So, let's see. How big is Cam Whitmore? 6'7 um, as well from Villanova. Um, this is tough. Honestly, like I said, I think they trade this pick, but again, just for the sake of, uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to say they take Amin Thompson just because I think they would slide Matisse Thibel more to the two. And Cam Reddish, Justin Winslow, and Kevin Knox are all just projects and uh, just kind of whatever, all former lottery picks that just really have not panned out at all. And Sear Little can play the three and the four, so he has his kind of role there. But I think Amen Thompson can come in at the three. Uh, they can move Jeremiah Grant over to the four. And uh, have a pretty good player pretty good prospect in Amen Thompson coming into the, to your team. So we're going to go ahead and pick him. Next we have the Houston Rockets. Now this is very dependent on what they do in free agency, of course, uh, because apparently James Harden wants to come back to the Rockets. If that happens, then uh, you can pretty much say goodbye to Scoot, because why the hell would they draft a Scoot? When they already have Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, uh, Knicks. Um, I mean, you just have a ton of players. Like, they have a ton of guards. Uh, they have Ty Ty Washington. Is Ty Ty Washington, too? Yeah, they, they just drafted Ty Ty Washington. Uh, you have a ton of guards on this team. A ton of young ones, too. Uh, and then at the three, they have Kenyon Martin Jr., uh, Jason Tate. Uh, Jay Sean, right? Yeah, Jay Sean Tate. I actually like him, and I like Tari Eason as well. So they have a lot of players, a lot of a lot of young players as well. And of course, at center they have Alprin Singun, who is actually pretty pretty solid. I like his game. Another one of the foreign centers or foreign bigs who just has pretty good playmaking ability. And then behind him, another foreign center. They have Usman Garupa. But uh, I mean. There's a hole, I guess you could say, in power forward, but uh, I mean, Tari Eason can play power forward. So I wouldn't say there's really a need for power forward, especially when you just drafted Jamari Smith. Uh, he's kind of your future at that position. So for the Rockets, 
I honestly think they trade down as well because I'm not really sure where they improve, especially if they get James Harden. Because, uh, I mean, if you get James Harden in at the point or at the two, then you still have Kevin Porter Jr. on the bench. They're not going to bench Jalen Green. Uh, I don't even know, or I don't even want to know what um, the shot selection between James Harden and Jalen Green would look like. But, uh, again, for the sake of the video... Um, I'm going to have them draft Cam Whitmore out of Villanova. Uh, I already have his tab open, but uh, of course, went pretty, or went decently far in uh, in the tournament. was pretty good in the tournament as well. If we look at some of his game logs, uh, they did lose to Creighton, but uh, in that game, he, he didn't play his best didn't shoot as well as he normally does as you can see uh, normally shoots pretty decent 35 or 34 percent from three isn't great uh, but it's not completely awful either so we'll see we'll see what happens in real life but uh again just for the video's sake uh, i'm gonna have him going to the rockets Next, we have the Pistons, another team that doesn't really need a guard. Uh, they just drafted Jaden Ivey with, what, the number five, yeah, number five overall pick. Killian Hayes sucks, uh, but they have Cade Cunningham, who is, of course, their future for the, uh, for the Pistons. I think they need a three. Um, Nick Smith Jr. isn't that tall, so I'm not sure that he would, really would play the three, so... Honestly, I'm going to have them take the other Thompson brother, or Sar Thompson, or the other Thompson twin. Um, also 6'7", I believe, yeah. Uh, long arms, solid defender. Uh, can shoot a little bit. Not from three, but from the mid-range. Um, so, and I think this is the more aggressive of the two twins. I believe he gets the basket more. Um, so we're going we're gonna to take him, because right now they have Bogdan, or Bojan Bogdanovic. Um at the three which is uh, for a young team i mean he's a good veteran presence but uh, i mean this is really the only spot they're missing a young player at at the four they have jalen uh or, yeah jalen duran they just picked and isaiah stewart who they picked the year before so uh, i think asar thompson would be a good addition to this team but also kind of solidify that defense because of course these two are, are pretty good defenders strong uh, strong bigs and then you add uh, a lengthy defender and asar thompson I think it's I think it's a good pick. Okay, six pick for the Orlando Magic. Currently, uh, I mean, if Scoot is on the board, I'm just gonna go straight with it. Uh, I mean, Marco Fultz is is decent, and so is Cole Anthony. Uh, Jalen Suggs hasn't exactly lived up to what we thought he would be. Of course, they picked Paolo Banquero last year, uh, and then Franz Wagner is pretty solid. Wendell Carter Jr. I mean, he's okay. But I think they pick Scoot Anderson here, of course, if he's still available. Uh, I mean, honestly, the Hornets could pick him. Definitely think the Hornets could pick him. But any of these other teams, I just can't see them picking him. Uh, now, Scoot is a generational talent. So, you know, maybe a GM will be like, oh, we'll figure it out. Uh, like, I could definitely see the Trailblazers or the Hornets figuring out how to integrate him into their team because you got Teams like the Pacers, who have Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Matherin, uh, two players that need, kind of need to have the ball in their hands uh, to do their best work, at least on offense. Uh, but they've kind of made that work this last season. I mean, speaking of the Pacers, they're up next, but uh, if Scoot is available at this position, they take him no question. Next, we have the Indiana Pacers, who have Tyrese at the one. I mean, you could say Benedict Matherin is a three, but um, as you can see, yeah, guard forward, he, he plays the two as well. I'm not sure if he puts his position on here, but uh, he, he plays the, the two as well. Now, Andrew Nemard has actually been playing pretty solid in the past couple game or not past couple games. In the past season, he actually played uh, in the regular season. He actually, he actually played pretty solid. Um, I think I'm going to go Derek Lively, the second for them here. Um, I mean, Miles Turner's good, but I think they could get better at the four than Aaron Neesmith. Um, he's 
is definitely a, a bit small for the for the four position. So, uh, you know, maybe they slide Miles Turner to the four because Miles Turner can shoot. So, uh, not too big of an issue there. And then they uh, get a bit of height with Derek Lively, the second, who is seven one. So, of course, we know Miles Turner is a pretty decent rim protector. So you add another good rim protector. We'll go with Derek Lively, the second. Next, we have the Wizards, um, who have Monte Morris at point guard, Bradley Beal at the two, Kuzma at the three, Gafford at the four, and Porzingis at the five. Uh, they have Corey Kispert behind Kyle Kuzma, who they picked. Uh, what they pick him last year? Uh, they picked him in or not last year, 2021, where they pick him again. 2021, they picked him right outside the lottery. Um, and their number 10 pick this year was Johnny Davis, who I don't even think has seen the NBA court yet. Um, I know he has, but he only has started five games. And it looks like he was pretty abysmal in those five games. Um, averaged about six points, which is not good for a number 10 overall pick. But, you know, maybe it'll get better in the future, which is, of course, what they're hoping for. Uh, considering, I, I guess he's going to start at the, at the one. Uh, I mean, maybe not. I guess he starts at the four. I don't even know. Uh, so I'm just going to go Keontae George, because if they want him to start at the three, Johnny Davis, then why not go with Keontae George? Uh, big guard, 6'4". Uh, so he has, you know, good height for that position. Averaged 15 points as a freshman for Baylor. Uh, they were one of the best teams in the country. Also averaged a steal a game. Probably does need to work on playmaking a little bit. Only averaged about three assists. Uh, didn't shoot great. Uh, did shoot. I mean, no, he didn't shoot great from three either, but a very explosive player. Uh, so there is that. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, let me check out the news about him. You can see some stuff. Number two, recruit coming out of high school. It doesn't really matter at this point, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Keontae George for the Washington Wizards. Okay, so on to the ninth pick for the Utah Jazz. Uh, they currently have Jordan Clarkson, Ochai, Akbaji. Uh, they picked, I thought they picked him last year, but I guess they picked him in, or they did pick him last year, so where is he? They picked him in the lottery last year. Don't know why he's not here. Uh, but they picked him at, with the last pick of the lottery last year. Uh, I think he's going to be pretty good in the league, but uh, I'm a bit biased because I am a Kansas fan. Uh, they also picked Johnny Juzang last year. And, of course, Walker Kessler, who was their starting center, had a great rookie year. Uh, made the all-rookie first team, so uh, congrats to him. For the Jazz, I think point guard is probably their main focus. Because Jordan Clarkson is decent, and Colin Sexton off the bench is, you know, he's decent as well. But uh, well, either point guard or power forward. Uh, and since there's no point guards, you know, the be or the best available players aren't really point guards, more shooting guards, uh, like Nick Smith and uh, Kaysen Wallace and Jerry Walker. Um, I'm gonna go with Dylan Mitchell from Texas. Stats don't say too much, but 6'8", uh, another one of these just kind of athletic freaks. Um, yeah, I mean, not much else to say about him. Again, didn't do too crazy or didn't do anything crazy uh, stats-wise at Texas, just after about four points. Uh, but, I, I mean, he only took three shots a game. So we're going to take him to replace Kelly Olenek. So I have the Jazz picking, and then with the 10th pick for the Mavericks, I, was, I really think this pick will be traded um, because if the Mavs, apparently they've had their eye on AD. If they want AD, then um, they're going to need to trade this pick for sure. But again, for the sake of the video, since I'm not doing any trades, if they get rid of Kyrie, um, Nick Smith Jr. could be an option. Derek Whitehead could also be an option since Tim Hardaway is 
pretty small for the three. Uh, but then you have the even smaller Reggie Bullock playing the four, uh, which really is, I mean, I think Maxi Kleba usually plays here. Uh, but since there's no power forwards that are really, uh, you know, anywhere near being the best prospect available at the current moment in our little simulated draft, uh, our mock draft, I'm just going to go with Nick Smith. Um, and you know, say that uh, Kyrie leaves in free agency and uh, they replace him with Nick Smith, which I don't think would be the worst replacement. Um, I mean, Nick Smith, very explosive player. And, uh, looks, looks like he'll be a pretty solid player in the league, which uh, will, be, will be needed for the Mavs if, uh, if they want to do anything with Luka. Next, we have the Thunder, who have a stupid amount of picks in the next couple drafts um or actually no not the thunder the we have the magic again the thunder is the next pick uh, so in this draft we've already selected scoot henderson for them so uh, he'll come in and replace markel fultz um, and then you know we have gary harris next to them but um, all the, these two i don't really see being replaced because i mean you have a lot of young players in here of course, you're not going to replace Paolo. I mean, Franz Wagner is honestly pretty good. Uh, maybe you want to replace Wendell Carter Jr. at center, but the next best available center is Julian Phillips, so I'm not really sure that's where you want to go. So honestly, I think you go either Kaysen Wallace or Jarese Walker. Um, I'd probably lean more towards Jarese Walker. I think he's a little bit better of a defender than... Uh, and Casey Wallace, I mean, he's 6'8", 220, so he's, I mean, the dude is built. Um, and yeah, Casey Wallace is a little bit uh, more, I won't say frail, but uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know uh, what word to use. We'll, we'll just use frail. Uh, but yeah, Jarese Walker's a tank, of course. Houston is known for their defense, uh, so I think they strengthen the two spot get a great player in Trace Walker. And I mean, also, Franz Wagner is decent at defense, but, uh, I mean, Scoot is a, is a capable defender. Uh, but Franz Wagner and Paolo aren't the best defenders, so I think if you secure up that backcourt, I think it's definitely a great idea. So now we are at the Thunder. The, th the Thunder. I don't know why I'm twisting up my words. The, the Thunder. Um... Their current lineup looks like this. Josh Giddy, SGA, Dort, J-Dub, and J-Dub. Uh, so two Jalen Williams. Um, and it's honestly a pretty good lineup. I mean, they really only have four or up to go um, because they made the playoffs, or they didn't make the playoffs, but they were in the play-in. Um, I mean, we saw a pretty good performance out of them. Uh, of course, they have a ton of picks. Coming up, like, like I said with the last, uh, or when I thought it was the Thunder, they don't have any other ones in this draft, but in the upcoming drafts, they have a lot in this draft. Um, I mean, they could go the three, but honestly, I mean, I like all of these players. Uh, like I said, I mean, they could go the three. Quavion Smith averaged 17 points, almost 18 points at, uh, at NC State at the three. So they definitely could go there. Uh, I, I guess we'll go there. Uh, I guess we'll go there for them uh, instead of Dariq Whitehead. Uh, let's see, Dariq Whitehead is 6'7", 190. He averaged about eight points per game. Uh, did not shoot well, but did shoot very well from three. So that is one thing. He did shoot very well from three. Terquavion Smith is 6'4", so uh, he's actually a pretty short small forward. So actually, we'll go Dariq Whitehead uh, just for that size. Uh, just because if we're looking at a true three, because I mean, Luke and Stort, or I'll just say Dort, he is only like 6'4", as well. But he, I mean, he's a tank. He's like 230 or something like that. Yeah, 220. So I mean, he's a tank. Um, and Terquavion Smith isn't exactly a tank. He's 160 pounds. Um, so we're going to go with Dariq Whitehead for the Thunder. And then we have the last pick of, or no, almost the last pick of the lottery, the Raptors. 
the 13th overall pick. They currently have Fred Van Vliet at the 1, Scotty Barnes at the 2, OG Ananobi at the 3, and Pascal Siakam at the 4 with Jakob Pertl at the 5, who they just traded for at the trade deadline. Uh, so really don't need to change any of this 1 to 4. I mean, all these are good players. Siakam is pretty much their best player. OG is a great defender and a decent shooter. Scotty Barnes, we know what Scotty Barnes is about, pretty much can do it all. Uh, so I would mainly be looking to replace Fred Van Vliet. And with Jalen Odier, I don't think that would be the worst pick um, out of Indiana. Big guard, he's 6'6", 215. Uh, so yeah, just huge for that position. Uh, we'll need to improve on his three-point shooting. Uh, and you know, get those assists up a little bit more, but uh, he did average 13 and a half points for Indiana, so uh, it's pretty, pretty solid, especially with uh, Trace Davis, or however, you, yeah, I don't know, where is he? Uh, I guess he's really far down. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I think they would go him with this pick. I mean, I really don't see what other position they would be looking to improve upon especially with the players currently on the board. I mean, maybe center, but you just traded for Jakob Pertl. Uh, so I don't think that would be the right move. So we're going to go Jalen Hood uh, to replace Fred Van Vliet for the Toronto Raptors. I mean, the last pick of the lottery, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. They currently have CJ McCollum at the one, Herb at the two, B.I. at the three, Trey Murphy at the four, and Jonas Valanciunas at the five. I think the position they could probably improve in is point guard with CJ you know, getting injured a decent amount now. He's getting older. Uh, I mean, they do have Dyson Daniels, uh, who's down here. So maybe they don't go point guard. Uh, maybe they go shooting guard or small forward instead. Of course, you do have Zion at back up at the four. Uh, and then center-wise, I mean, Valanciunas. They have other players, so I'm not really sure where they would go here, but, I mean, I would probably go at the two because Herb can play the two, the three, the four, and honestly, he could play the five if you really needed him to. So I think they could go with Case and Wallace. Now, the only thing is, is that he, I don't think he's the best defender, at least size-wise, which we just looked at. But if you have Dyson Daniels at the one, I don't think that's too much of a problem since Dyson Daniels is 6'8". Uh, so I'm just going to go with Casey Wallace for them here. Um, I think he's a, pretty, he's a pretty good shooter, I believe, or a decent shooter, about 35%. Uh, did it actually average two steals per game, so maybe he has a little sneaky swipe ability. Uh, so we'll go with him for the Pelicans. So there it is. We have... First overall pick, Victor Wimanyama. Second, Brandon Miller. Third, Amin Thompson. Fourth, Kent Whitmore. Fifth, Asar Thompson. Sixth, Scoot Henderson. Seventh, Derek Lively. The second, eighth, Keontae George. Ninth, Dylan Mitchell. Tenth, Nick Smith Jr. Eleventh, Juris Walker. Twelfth, Derek Whitehead. Thirteenth, Jalen Hood. And fourteenth, Kaysen Wallace. Let me know what you think about my mock draft. What things you would change? Do you think Scoot could possibly fall this far? Like I said, I think the Hornets could definitely find a way to make it work with the two. But, uh, you know, I, I think Brandon Miller also could be better suited for them, especially if they want to offload Gordon Hayward's big contract. So, uh, yeah, let me know how you think I did and what you would change. As always, if you guys enjoyed watching the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It is very much appreciated if you do. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.